Is this a case of preaching water and drinking alcohol? The National Assembly is puzzled by a supplementary budget that is supposed to be discussed in the House, showing that immediately after swearing in, the office of the presidency went on a spending spree. Brigade and William Ruto have exhausted their annual budget that was allocated as of the last financial year. In this analysis, I want us to find out what exactly could have caused that overspending and the interpretation of that as far as a uh, projection of economy is dilapidated is normally done by the administration. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bold Analysis. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our video. I want to say thank you very much for those who support us. But I want you to listen to this here first. And we want to say, Reverend Joyce, you have destroyed the situation in this country appropriately. But here is tomorrow. And we want to tell our detractors, we cannot clean the mess, the economic mismanagement of five years in five days. What we are doing right now is cleaning the mess. Mze, anaitwa matu wa mai, alipata KCC imekwisha, imefilisika. Akafanya kazi ya kaweka bidi na ikasimama vile iko leo. Mimi na wewe na wale watu wako chini yetu. Vile huyu matu wa mai alikuta KCC imefilisika. Dio sisi tumepata Kenya imefilisika na imekwisha. Na vile huyu matu wa mai alifanya new KCC. William Ruto na Regadi Gashawa tukifuata huyu mzee tutatufua tutafufua Kenya na Kenya itasimama and I want to say for the avoidance of doubt treasury is saying that office of the president and deputy have exhausted their annual budget four months before the end of the financial year and according to what um, is in the documents is that they have overshot their their budget by 470 million Kenyan shillings. So this is what happened. President William Ruto was allocated, or rather president, the office of the presidency was allocated 4.3 billion by the last administration. And however, that budget has been doubled and since getting in office, they have gobbled 8.85 billion shillings. Now, that has doubled what the treasury allocated them. So what, what's happening is this, that in the supplementary budget, um, the budget that was set, the, the budget that, that was given out, uh, um, you're not allowed to spend money from the exchequer, then you present a, a supplementary budget to the National Assembly. So because that is now the opportunity that uh, the executive and ministry sometimes use to gobble funds without prior accountability on what they were going to spend on. Remember also, the office of the presidency is never audited. Yes, it's the audit there. The, the, the audit queries from that uh, is not very meticulous compared to other offices. So there is a lacuna there. There's a, some loose ends on how uh, money can always be gobbled there. In December only, uh, the report is saying that the president withdrew 2.2 billion against an average of 1 billion that they're supposed to withdraw monthly. So that seems to have really shown what went on. Also, they're now asking the offices of Ruto and Gashagwa are asking for additional 5.1 billion in the supplementary budget they yet to present that is going to be presented in the National Assembly. Now, what is shocking here is that both President Ruto and Regadi Geshagwa made a statement that they put austerity measures to cut budget by 300 billion to minimize borrowing, so that uh, to minimize the issue of borrowing to fund the other, or rather to fund the, um, the recurrent expenditure. While they have also been so specific 
regard the saying that they found empty coffers. What do you think went wrong? Because you found empty compass, coffers, but you're spending spree starting from you. Because I once say that if you want to do these austerity measures, it should start from the big boys so that it will cascade down. Otherwise, you when the media is cutting these stories and people in government are looking at it, then you will lack the moral authority to call the shot on ministries and other offices to do austerity measures. If in your office also, if also, if just in your office you've gobbled uh, thrice what what is supposed, uh, what is allocated to you. So it's a very it's a very tight, it's a very delicate situation to be. And uh, I need to say, remember the president said that he's not one of the presidents that will continue or rather will sink Kenyan economy with borrowing. Um, we will have to relook at some of the interventions. I have seen uh, reports that we have slowed down on um, trips abroad and many of the other things and, and made sure that we are removing the fat from our budget. I promise you, because I will not be the president that will continue the journey of taking our country into debt. It's going to be a difficult choice, but I don't see an option. We just have to make those choices. So people are asking, where is the money and what went wrong? I want to tell you two, three things, uh, three activities that gobbled up funds from the two officers. The first one of it was we had a very wrong priority on state house facelifting. You know, when we got over, we created narratives that, oh, I don't know if you look at another poor mix, you don't track a fanny, and track but just do VTs, do you who can hear VT? Oh, status compound, it was, uh, it was Lami, so that's not a track of you, but Lisha go a cabro. I'm doing that, Lisha Tenaqua Lami. We had some very um, unnecessary spending, and I can tell you, while it was really projected, rather said as if we want to face lift by big new chairs, new computers, new what, new what. But those are just opportunities to get tenders and money is gobbled. So we started first. We said there is no money, but we spent billions. Could change Maviti, change Nini, change Ile. And that might have gobbled the funds. But even far from it, I look at the president might have spent the shilling on politics and this politics is too this political church political rallies that are disguised uh, church sessions interdenominational sessions that are disguised as political rallies are disguised as press but are political rallies so we spend money we pay those bishops daily allowances I don't know that they're bishops we pay those our political friends the, the, the allowances we cover you know we cover a lot organizing those events. We have an office that organizes those events. So those events have also cobbled funds from the office of the presidency. The other thing here is, and I may be just looking at it, political defectors might have really walked home with personal fortunes. <laughs> the very moment, because that has also been going on, we cannot rub off that, those political defections that money was also used to manage politics and could be personal fortune, some people getting millions from there. The other challenge that I also saw, I think G is it G20 summit in Egypt. We've been had we've been actually churning out bloated foreign mission. Bloated foreign missions. I'm I'm even wondering, in this 20th century age, why should we why should a PS carry himself with Many CEO, many, 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 many PAs and and advanced team. Come, come up here, say we are in a digital age where kila mtu nasa jijukulia na utzake. You know, in Tanzania they don't go out with the PAs, only president, and deputy. The rest 
Wewe mwenyewe unajiandikia. And if you go, you go with one. So here is a situation where we were going to Egypt. Ni kama hiyo hata summit ni kama ilikuwa yetu. We went there with and almost we were overrepresented there. In amongst the African countries, Africa was the most Kenya was the most represented there. And that precedence we've set. People have taken uh, an opportunity that it's our time to eat. So Kiskia, uh president is going to Ethiopia. It's a mission to now get least representatives from the National Assembly. I don't know from the office of the president, from the family, from from the church you know we've got a lot our foreign missions have been bloated and it's because we also want to please our political uh, teams or the people that campaign for us even if you can't find a job here you can find an opportunity to fly with the president and get yourself some very good allowances from the exchequer that's how life goes on we know people who I, I saw Manjara saying the other day that there are some people that are building their houses and their homes by just these foreign trips. Akienda moja kirudi, ameka foundation. Ingine kirudi, ameno mabati na kulipa fundi. And that has been going on. Then, because of that, then it is high time that we look at it this way. The economic crisis that is being projected could be a cover-up. We are not in that crisis. And the crisis in terms of we found the treasury dry, atapanya hawana kitio kukula, those statements are just emotional, trying to play the emotional intelligence of Kenyans to make sure that you create firewalls that we can't blame you. You know, you know we've always, and, and one thing I've, I've, I've realized here is uh, the KK administration have mastered the art of uh, Creating a huge crisis so that they give it um, an, an, uh, a, a, a simplistic solution. Very good one here is uh, universities are struggling with pending bills. And this did not start today. I graduated in Masemara University in 2017. By that 2017, I remember I had to go and retake some classes, some units, because a lecturer who was a part time lecturer was never paid, and so he never brought the results. That happened. If you talk to university students, the culture of missing marks has been there because some lecturers are not paid. So it started way back. But then all of a sudden, we've made it look like the pending bill started yesterday. And from nowhere, you want to hike the university fees to almost 52,000. You know, the problems have been here. The same way we are struggling with the foreign debts, we also struggle with the local debts here. So we, we have to find a solution. We have delayed paying counties for four months so that we'll start telling them that, look here, we don't have the money you want. Even if you want to remove our trousers and wipers, do that. <laughs> then the second thing is this. The administration hunting for supermajority in parliament to control parliament is because of insecurity. There are a lot of things that are going on. And I normally say those who cross over, those who are supposed to be in opposition and try to supposed to play oversight roles, and are crossing over to the government are doing a disservice to Kenyans. You are doing a disservice to citizens because as things go, we have an administration that themselves they are looking for oversight. And they need it. If you're not, if you, you fell on the minority, you're not to oversight, you're supposed to oversight and you're not, please you are doing it a disservice. Because I know National Assembly, both minority and majority are supposed to do oversight, but they don't do it because majority will always. It's a norm. It's a, it's a practice all over the world. Majority will always align with the executive. So they will not. What tries to do oversight Kidogo is the minority. So also, the blame games with this trend, the blame games on Uhuru Raila handshake will not be potent in the next few months. In the next few months, I don't think it will be moral to come to public and tell us Uhuru and Raila did this and that, and that's why we are here. If anything, we've said we have stabilized the economy. Secondly, we Kenyans are also seeing that Kumbiata, in fact, those stories of status spent a lot of billions, there is no difference. You're also spending those billions now. So in the next few months, we should not be told about handshake stories. That's my end.